Hi folks, you know Frank Zappa once said that the illusion of freedom will continue for as long as it's profitable to continue the illusion. But at the point that the illusion becomes too expensive to maintain, they'll take down the scenery, they'll pull the tables and chairs out of the way, they'll pull back the curtains and you'll see the brick wall at the back of the theatre. And that's what I think is happening now, folks. People are seeing the brick wall at the back of the theatre because that's certainly what it is. You know, the steps the government is taking to protect us from this pandemic are quite literally over the top, folks. We've got martial law coming in virtually right around the world. We've got military being deployed across the United States, military being deployed in the UK, there are reports from two people that I've heard of UN soldiers actually landing in Darwin as well. I haven't seen any photographs of that. I haven't heard any other reports of that at all, but I have heard from two people on the ground that that's what's going on. I'd like to confirm that. If there's anybody in Darwin who can send me any photographs or who can confirm this for me, it would be great if you could send me a message. It'd be nice to get a bit of a handle on what's going on there. In the UK, they've introduced lockdown, I think, today in the UK. Interesting thing in that is that on March 19th, the UK government downgraded COVID-19 from a high-consequence infectious disease to just a normal outbreak, something that wasn't too bad on March 19. And here on March 24, they send the UK into lockdown with a stay-at-home policy and police out there patrolling the streets to make sure people stay at home. One would question why the police aren't staying home if this is so infectious and it could be eliminated by everyone staying home. Then why are the police and the military and the politicians not staying home? So these rules seem to apply to them, but they don't apply to us. You know, interesting folks, two sets of rules. But then they've always been like that. In the United States, the Department of Justice has enacted emergency powers which enable them to be able to detain anybody indefinitely without question, simply because they suspect them of having coronavirus. So you can see where they're going to take that. There's been all sorts of reports of massive amounts of troops going across the United States as well, like convoys of tanks on trains and all sorts of stuff. There's been reports of soldiers in RVs with mounted machine guns sitting on corners as well, protecting the people from this terrible coronavirus. So you've got to really wonder what's going on there. Massive troop movements happening all around the world, folks. So what is going on underneath this coronavirus? Because, you know, it's not what they're telling us. There's something really big happening behind the scenes. And I don't think it is the you know, arresting of the deep state and the taking down of the cabal, as many people are saying. I think there's something far more serious going on, something far more insidious going on. But they're locking us away for a reason. I wouldn't be surprised if they are rolling out all this 5G infrastructure while people are locked away. That wouldn't surprise me at all. But what else are they doing? You know, it's an interesting question, folks. There's a lot going on. Um, but the legislation we're seeing enacted, you know, the stuff that they're doing to protect us, the steps they're taking, the emergency measures they're enacting, I mean, these things won't go away, folks. Quite predictably, we've seen Israel come to the saviour of everybody, and they're saying that they have now enacted emergency acts whereby they're going to be using people's cell phones to track their contact lists. So if you go in for testing and you're diagnosed positive of te as testing positive for coronavirus, they're going to use your cell phone to track all the people that you came in contact with so they can then contact them as well. So you can see where they're kind of taking this, folks. You know, They can take it any way they want. And that's the way they're taking it. I've been telling people to get rid of their cell phones for a while. They're going to use these things to track you. And that's what they're doing in Israel. And don't think that won't be coming out to the Western world as well, because of course it will. Something else that they're talking about now is the fact that because there's so many people home and we need so much bandwidth for emergency services, they may have to ration the internet this is something that I talked about a couple of reports ago, how I told you they would very likely find an excuse to shut down the internet, and I would expect them to do that very soon, folks. And that's going to be an interesting period, because that's going to be a time when all civilian communication goes dark. 
and in that period we are all going to be out of contact with each other so that's why i've been saying you need to establish ties with people on the ground you know at least phone numbers landlines people's names and addresses people that you live nearby you know we want to be able to check up on people which is very difficult if you're not allowed to go outside so you know we may see a lot of people disappearing in this period folks that's a that's a big concern as well you know we hear about this list of names for mass arrests and everyone assumes it's the elite but what if it isn't what if it's the truth movement what if it's the resistance you just don't know where they're going to take this folks and there's so many people out there pushing that, oh, this is a good thing, this martial law is a good thing, shutting down the borders and the airlines, it's all a good thing, it's all going to lead to, you know, a wonderful future. You know, I think they're being deceived, folks. I think we're heading into a very, very dystopian future. And I think it's important for people to watch out for that period where it all goes dark. I'm wondering whether that will be on the 10th of April. It's an interesting date, the 10th of April. There's a picture that's been circulating of Trump standing out there, standing next to a car, and it's got 4, 10, 20 on the number plate of the car. These, of course, is Trump's initials in numbers, you know, D being the fourth letter of the alphabet, J being the 10th, and T being the 20th. But really, it's a date. It's 4, 10, 20, which will be the 10th of April, 2020. Or we could see the internet being shut down for... 10 days on the 4th of April. You never know. You just don't know. Or it could be shut down, yeah, 10 days at the beginning of this month. You never know. It could be on April 1st they shut it down for 10 days until the 10th of April. You don't know. But I am fully expecting to see the internet shut down. I'm just wondering if that date has anything significant about it. You know, so something to look out for, folks. Uh, what else are they doing? They've closed the borders here in Australia. They've closed all the state borders. They're closing the border between Queensland and New South Wales at midnight tonight. And I'm fully expecting Australians to be served with a stay-at-home policy as well for a couple of weeks at least. You know, but they always tell us it's a couple of weeks and it never is. So it's going to be interesting to see where it goes, folks. We are certainly heading into new times. But what we are seeing with this whole pandemic because that's what it is. It's a definitely a planned event. And it has more economic and political ramifications than anything else, because this is going to completely collapse the world economic system. The unemployment rate in the United States is up to about, I think, 15 million now. It was one to four million at the beginning of the coronavirus outbreak. And now it is 14 or 15 million. It was 14 the other day. I think it's up to 15 million now. They're saying that one in 20 uh, Brits have lost their jobs or will lose their jobs in the very near future. A lot of people are unable to pay their mortgages. There's a lot of really bad stuff going on financially. So you can see where they're going to lead that. And what we're heading for, folks, is a collapse of the financial system that is going to be worse than anything we've ever seen before. This is going to be worse than the 1930s depression. It's going to be worse than, than anything we've seen, worse than anything so far, I would say, in the history of the financial system. And uh, it's important that people pay attention to this and see where this is going. And, you know, you can't even buy gold and, bullion, gold and silver bullion anymore because the, the bullion stores are closed down in most countries because of this lockdown. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of forces at work here, ladies and gentlemen. And, you know, it's important that we, we keep focus through this. It's important that we, we stay in contact with each other. As I've said, you know, if they do shut down the internet for 10 days and they stop civilian communication, uh, the internet that comes back, I imagine, will be something very different to what we see today. And I don't imagine the websites like the Crow House will still be there. Now, I wonder whether the creators of these websites will still be there as well. Very easy to make people disappear in these sort of circumstances, folks. So pay attention, you know, get a grab bag and get ready to head out to the hills if you need to. Uh, get yourself to some high ground. You know, we are heading in for very, very uncharted territory, ladies and gentlemen, through all this. Another report I'm hearing as well, I mean, you get so many reports coming in, it's hard to know what's true and what isn't. But another report I'm hearing, because, you know, when you look at this coronavirus, I mean, it, it could be 
that the United States added some sort of a protein to a normal coronavirus and released it in China as some sort of a bioweapon that was race-specific. There's a lot of indications that they, they've been doing this. I mean, they have been collecting Chinese DNA for a long time, so you never know what they could have done to kickstart this. I mean, they could release some sort of a pathogen in China and then they could um, just use propaganda to bring it out to the rest of the world. There's, sort, there's talk that they released some sort of sarin in, uh, in Italy to cause a whole bunch of illness in Italy and just sell it to the people as coronavirus. There's reports coming out from nurses in the UK and in the Netherlands that they are actually swamped in the hospitals, but most of the people that are coming in there have other illnesses. It's just the flu on top of it, which is causing all the problems. And of course, because everyone thinks they have coronavirus and they're all going in for testing and they're diagnosing virtually anything as being coronavirus, of course, the hospitals are becoming overwhelmed. So, you know, things are not what we're being told. But there is every chance, every possibility, they did release some sort of an agent in China. And there's talk coming out of China that's getting sent to me that China is very annoyed with the United States and is even thinking of attacking the United States. I mean, that would be a card that I don't think too many people have thought of. But, you know, it's an interesting thing. You know, if China was to attack the United States, if China had any designs to attack any Western countries... Well, now would be the time to do it while our countries are in complete disarray through this pandemic, while our economies are crashing, everyone's in a state of confusion and everyone's completely disorganized. It would be a good time to attack if you wanted to do it. And if they did that, the United States could not win a war against China, not in its present position. You know, and for all the gung ho, gun toting um, bravado of a lot of the people of the United States. Many of them have never lived in a real war zone. I mean, there's never been a, a real war fought on United States soil. Many of them have never even been to a real war zone and have no idea what a real war would actually look like. So, you know, it would be an interesting thing if that card were to be played. And it would work for the globalists as well. I mean, they don't care how many people die and you know it isn't like china is the enemy not when you get up the top and you look at you know who's running things in the banksters and all this i mean they love the chinese system they'd like to see this introduced in all our countries so how would they do that well through this pandemic and with china snapping up all the shares and all the stuff that it's doing they could do it this way and if they would have stayed some sort of a, a conflict as well they could maybe sell it that way as well so it's going to be interesting to see where this goes. It would also explain why there's such a troop movement all around the world, because there's massive troop movements happening everywhere. It would explain what that's all about. Uh, it would explain a lot of things, but, you know, we just got to see where it goes, folks. As I said, we're heading into uncharted territory. We really are. But it's important, I think, to realise that what we are seeing here, as I said before, is more of an economic and a political move than anything else. Um, you know, it, it's not about a pandemic, it's not about a virus, it's about restructuring the economic system. And that's what we're seeing here. So yeah, hold on to your hats, folks. Hold on to your hats. We ain't seen nothing yet, it's just beginning. And do establish ties with people that you want to stay in contact with, especially in this, this so-called truth movement. It's a pretty precarious situation we find ourselves in, folks. You know, I did say to people, a few years ago, yeah, when people, when they were trying to get me into the whole flat earth thing and arguing about that, I said to them, listen, you know, there's a train coming. And if you people don't stop arguing about the shape of the tracks, it's going to hit you. It's going to hit your head on. It will be sudden. There will be no warning. And you'll have no one to blame but yourself. And this has been very sudden, the way it's hit. And it's been so all-encompassing. A lot of people have been surprised at the speed that this has all rolled out and how all-encompassing it's been, how many boxes they're checking with this. You know, the cashless grid, the tracking system, the social crediting system, the lockdown, the martial law, the, the change of the monetary system, you know, the restructuring of our societies, all in one blow, all through this fear of this terrible pandemic, you know. It's very contrived, folks, but it's been planned for a long time, and we have been warning you about this for a long time, so there's no reason that anyone should you know, appear to be surprised about any of this. It's just anybody's guess as to where it's really going to go next. 
So, you know, I'm just urging people to stay focused and stay safe. Um, I do love you all and I do hope to be with you for some time into the future, but it's anybody's guess as to where we're going to go from one day to the next. I mean, things are changing virtually by the hour, by the minute. So, you know, do keep me posted on changes on the ground where you live. And I'll probably bring these reports to you every day or every two days or something like that. I think it's good for us to put out little reports like this, even if it's only for five minutes every day or two, just to let people know that we're safe, let people know that everything's good on the ground, and to let people know of any changes that are happening on the ground around us as well. You know, but I think it's good for people to just make sure they're putting out something to stay in contact with people and let people know that they're okay and establish some sort of a, a means of communication so you'll be able to get through the dark period as well and let people know what's happening to you if anything does because I think we are heading for very soon a period of non-communication which is going to be an interesting time folks that's going to be a time where we can perhaps take the opportunity to get back in touch with ourselves do some meditation get back in touch with nature that's as long as the stormtroopers don't come storming through the door and take us away so interesting times folks no stake in the outcome even if that does happen you know whatever happens folks it's important to keep your vibration high through all this you know we're involved in some sort of a game here you know, it's like we're living in a movie it really is uh you know reality is not what we think it is at all but keep your vibration high don't lose focus of yourself through this there will be a light at the end of the tunnel eventually you know, they are red-pilling the whole world. I mean, think about that, folks. A lot of people are waking up to the fact that something is terribly wrong. And that's a good thing. And so, you know, what we can do is provide a safety net for those people that are waking up to let them know that all is not lost. They do have friends around them. But I think the time for us to be going out there and doing the radio shows and doing the things we're doing, attempting to wake the world, I think that time is past, folks. The ones who aren't awake now are going to get a pretty quick lesson in wakefulness before too much longer so i think we've already done our job and the best thing we can do now as i've said before is to look after yourself look after your family and to provide a safety net for those who are waking up through this let them know that all is not lost and that we will be able to find a light at the end of the tunnel and hey look at the positive folks if they do shut the net down like i said we'll be able to get back in touch with nature again and it will come back online eventually hopefully all of us will still be here hopefully there will still be some sort of a truth and freedom movement on the internet and hopefully we'll be able to build a new future from there you know i think they've kind of overstepped the mark with a lot of this you know i think they're going to wake too many people up too quickly and even people in the military and the people who are going to be used to oppress the masses a lot of them are people as well and a lot of them i don't think will want to go along with it so you know, all it's going to take is for someone within those ranks to break ranks and a lot of people will follow. So the fat lady certainly hasn't sung yet. But that's about all I wanted to bring you today, folks. I'll bring you another report tomorrow or the next day and I'll look forward to talking to you then. Please take very good care until then and please do continue to send me the information you're, you're sending me regarding what's happening on the ground in your own area. And thank you to all those people who send me so many kind emails and thank you to all the people who support me on Patreon. It's really been a, a pleasure to be doing this journey with you. But stay safe, everyone. Stay safe and look after yourselves. Look after your family. I love you all. I really do. And I don't think that all is lost. I think we will find a way through this. It's kind of interesting to be here for the big freak show at the end and see where it's going to lead. But I think there's something going on behind the scenes that nobody's really guessed at yet. So it's going to be interesting to see where that unfolds. Do take care and do stay safe. Thank you for joining me for this little discussion. And I'll talk to you again soon. In La Cache.